All right, guys, another awesome one for you. Now, today, super, super excited to offer this one. We've had a bunch of questions on the Instagram uh, from people sort of wanting a lockdown training program. How can I get started at home with a lockdown training program? How can I continue to play? Uh, I'm missing basketball, you know, like, can you help me, please? I'm desperate. And so we have you covered. I should say. Now, what I really want to say to start with here is that this program is not only going to serve you during lockdown, but it's it's going to be the best default program you can do if you're on holidays and you want to keep playing basketball, if you're traveling and you don't have access to a court. You know, this program represents the best of the best of sports science and elite athletic science um, in one concise package so that you can you know continue to train and start training where you're at now and create yourself the perfect training week. Uh, I'm so excited to be able to offer this just because I see myself, like if I was 13 and I knew this program existed and I had this program, I would be, I didn't even know where I would be. Like I would be literally a professional athlete at that stage because there's just so much in here and really becoming a professional athlete is just a matter of kind of starting somewhere and then gradually over time layering up until you reach that 10,000 hours of performance. And, you know, we need to be our own best head coach and understand that process. And so that is really what this whole training program is about. It's, it's a structure and a layering of all of the things that you can do depending on the level that you're at, um, depending on your age. You know, if, if you're younger, you can sort of cut some of the stuff out and just really focus on the key things of being consistent and doing you know, regular training and focusing on the basketball specific stuff. And if you're a bit older, you can sort of work towards the framework that we recommend, which is that sort of 20 hour mark. And then if, you're, if you've been training at 20 hours for a while and you feel good at that, then you can go beyond and above. And that's where working with a specific coach comes into it. But really, I'm so excited to be able to offer this because in lockdown, it's such a struggle to be able to train. And if you don't have access to a court, you don't have access to a gym, you don't need any of that because this is, you could do this training program in a hotel room and, you know, get similar benefits to what you could from training and playing. Um, and then what, what I want to caveat that with is to say, look, there's going to be some things of your aerobic system that might not be developed as well if you were in a hotel room. But the key thing with this training plan is that if you do it as outlined and you're in lockdown, you'll be able to get out, you'll be able to get the minimum amount of sort of cardio stimulus needed if you feel like you need more cardio then let's know we can work that in but you know what you need best but the key to this program is that it's it's going to work on the things that you're weak at the key areas of your game they're going to have the biggest improvements and the biggest areas of improvement and it's going to start building the base of athleticism you need to level up and continue to progress so many athletes never reach their full athletic potential and so this whole program is about optimizing your skills helping you to learn and understand how to make the most of mental practice and film study and really incorporate all of the pillars into a concise and unique training plan. So super excited to be able to share it with you. Please, please, please um, take this with, you know, don't take it lightly, I should say. This is a great opportunity during lockdown to improve your game tremendously and build the habits of becoming an elite athlete. Um, and so that is why we wanted to share this program with you because we want to bring 3-on-3 basketball to Sydney. We want to create the future of basketball, build the future of basketball players in Australia and give more opportunity for people to play. And we know the only way we can do that is give people access to the best possible information. Um, those who don't know, you know, I'm a 10-year strength and conditioning coach and I've been coaching basketball for about the same amount of time, played at the higher levels of the game and sort of have spoken to some of the top coaches in the world. And so that's where all of this stuff comes from in the training plan and Really, you know, our, our vision is to turn Sydney into a basketball powerhouse. And we know that the only way that we can do that is to allow people to play basketball at their best. And that's why we've created this entire program. Um, with all of that said, you know, we recognize that basketball could be the biggest sport Australia has. And it was so good to see the boomers uh, winning bronze. And we know that it's only up from here. And as Paddy Mills said, you know, Bronze is the new standard or gold is the new standard. We want to make gold the standard for Australia. And so this is our bit at the Sydney Supersonics to help do that. When we come out of lockdown, you guys will all be firing and playing at your absolute best. Let's, well, without further ado, let's check out the program. 
Sydney Supersonics, how are we doing? Incredibly excited to share this with you today. So what we're gonna be running through is the perfect training week uh, for an elite athlete. Now this comes from our elite athlete blueprint course. And a part of that is you know, really diving into, as we sort of always talk about, diving into the specific habits and routines that elite performers are doing. And this training program is something we are incredibly proud of. As a strength and conditioning coach who's worked in the industry with real athletes for over 10 years, like I've just, I've never seen anything that comprehensively brings it all together in such a concise manner like this. Now, looking at it now, chances are you're taking a look at it, it is probably going to be a little bit overwhelming, but that is the point. Um, I really want athletes who are keen to take it serious to be able to look at this and slowly incorporate all of these aspects to their game so that after a few weeks of running with this type of schedule, you know, they're at the level of an elite athlete in terms of the amount of work they're doing. A really good summary of all of the work that's being done is kind of listed down here. So this is the amount of time you're physically training on each of these days. Um, here's the time that you're sort of mentally practicing and then here's the total calculation. Now this number here, the 20 hours, is based on NCAA recommendations for the amount of times that athlete should be spent training. Um, some athletes at the elite and professional level are going to be training more than that and playing more than that. However, for most athletes, it is going to be counterproductive and it is best to start sort of at a lower volume of training comparatively to a higher volume of training and then see how you feel and adjust to that. The reason why that is, is because we want to get away with the minimum effective dose. If we do more than we need, then what is actually going to happen is we're going to lower our body's ability to respond to stimulus over the longer term. So if we're doing too much, our body is going to get good at doing so much work, but it can only adapt a certain amount. And so over the long term, we're not going to be able to do as much work um, because at the end of the day, we only get better when we're actually recovering from the work that we're doing. And so if we do too much, our body doesn't recover as well. We put ourselves at a risk of injury and at much greater risk of tissue damage. And we don't allow the body to properly recover. Um, and as we know in any sort of practice, all that we're doing is trying to stimulate our body and brain and the tissues within it to adapt and respond to the stimulus that we're kind of imparting on it. And so really, this is a bit of a paradigm shift in terms of a lot of athletes now they think about it, but it's really like to an extent, less is more. Now for, for a lot of you, that conversation is probably a bit like, okay, I see what you're talking about, but this training program is far more than anything I've done. And this looks super intense. Um, and so that's good. That's awesome. You know, you can work up towards this, but once you get, and you're starting to do more than 20 hours of training, which is some of you more experienced athletes and some of you who really want to make it, it's really important to start thinking about, you know, once you're going beyond 20 hours, okay, what, how long have I been training for? How am I feeling with my training? Have I actually gotten better? Am I measuring my progress? And then knowing how you can adjust things based on the stage of season that you're in. And that's why down here, we've got these different stages of the season. For now, we're going to be focusing just on the lockdown uh, phase. And then as the season progresses, we'll start to build in this in-season training week, off-season training week, and pre-season training week. And all of these stages are going to be put into the training year so that you can be training in an optimal training week at each stage of the year and also give yourself time for recovery. As we talked about in the interview with uh, Matt Horsnell, the high jump coach for the Olympic silver medalist, you know, when training elite athletes, you need to have time for recovery, you need to have deload periods. And so as you become more of an elite athlete, you're going to need to more effectively plan your training so you can go hard when it's time to go hard and rest when it's time to rest. And that is what this whole pro, uh, perfect week is about. For most athletes, it's about teaching you to go hard when it's time to go hard on these two red days and then learn how to go you know, pretty easy in your training 
not too hard, but just going in and getting the, the work done, being consistent, you know, working towards the minimum effective dose and then resting when it's time to rest. Now in the in season stage, you're probably gonna have three hard days in the off season stage. Um, probably back to this too. This is more like an off season type period. And then in the pre-season, you're probably going to go back to three hard days. And so we will work that through um, with you guys as athletes as you get more advanced. But for now, for, for people seeing this for the first time, this is the ideal training week to aim for if you aren't doing this amount of work. If you're doing more than this, then perhaps it's time to have a conversation with your coach or look at look critically at your performance and make sure that you're actually progressing. Some of you might be able to stomach uh, more than 20 hours of physical work per week. Um, but I would really consider that, or I would implore you to evaluate um, the results that you've been doing and how hard you're actually going in each session. Now, without getting too bogged down into that, um, I want to just sort of run through how to use it because we've had a lot of people on Instagram asking for the kind of ideal training program that I, they can do at their house at lockdown. And so I've really used the Elite Athlete Blueprint, which we have here, to show this perfect training week in a nice, concise fashion. Now, all of these lectures are to YouTube videos and to videos and lectures within the Elite Athlete Blueprint that we really, really like and that will serve as your guide to effectively determine what you need to do on each of these days. Now, as you know, in the Elite Athlete Blueprint, we have our six pillars. So we have mindset, physical preparation, sporting skill, tactical development, recovery, and lifestyle. So to contextualize this quickly, these are all pretty obvious. Physical preparation is like your gym and athletic work. Sporting skill is the specific individual skill sets you need to be able to perform your sport, which in this case is basketball. And then the tactical development is actually playing basketball as part of a team. And that's why we've put a big focus on game visualization and on-court study and film. Now, basically, on-court study would be watching people playing. It's not quite possible to do during lockdown, so you're just going to be watching film. Now, in the blueprint, we have a guide to watching film. As we see here, becoming a true professional, how to study film. And the key to film is that, uh, we'll be talking about it on the Instagram, but the key is it has this concept known as subconscious mimicry and also our mirror neurons are being activated. We spoke about it in our last video, but when watching film, you're creating a neural pattern in the brain and a neural stimulus that causes the brain to recognize that if you're already a skilled performer, you can see someone else performing that skill and your brain is going to inherently practice that skill by watching someone else do it. Now, in terms of the actual percentage of benefit that can get to you, um, it's it's not quite known, but it's been shown that up to 80% of the benefit can be had from simply mentally practicing as opposed to physically practicing. And it's important to remember that what we're trying to do when we practice is actually stimulate our brain. So the more stimulus you can get to the brain to be practicing, the better you will be. And so that's where we have this mental rehearsal component and the film component. So this is your individual skill set. So you can essentially watch film of someone performing a skill and you will get better as a result of that. But you can also mentally practice that skill and you will get better as a result of that. And it's important to really go into details about the rehearsal and the visualization. And that's um, something we have a guide on in the blueprint. And at the moment, it's, it's sort of in construction, but if you're looking through it and you're like, oh, look, I want some more detail on that, let us know and we can we can get that to you. Um, but really, this mental rehearsal component is absolutely massive and it's something that not enough athletes do. And so that's the mental rehearsal of the skills individually. And then when it's game visualization, you're actually sort of running through the plays that you run in a game. Um, you're thinking through your position, you're thinking through different scenarios and it really helps to use film to be able to do that. So if you're looking at um, a film breakdown, say for example, for three on three, um, you might look at the settings in the game and pause it at a certain situation and then think through what you would do if you were the player with the ball in hand. And this type of visualization is what elite athletes do and it is the next frontier of elite performance. LeBron James is being credited as saying, he doesn't feel like he plays basketball anymore. He just sort of thinks the game. 
Um, he thinks the game a lot more than he plays it. And so this is a massive, massive element to leveling up your performance in basketball. If you note that you don't um, run plays particularly well or you know you don't fit well on the court, then this can help you kind of evaluate you know, what it is that you're doing and how you can progress as a player to be able to work with these things. So massive element to watch film and just critically see, you know, what are the people at the top level doing and how can you fit in with that? So that's to acknowledge this sort of um, component there with the film and the mental prep. And it is a massive frontier that uh, will allow players during lockdown. This is why I'm super excited to be able to share this. It'll allow players during lockdown to get their fix of playing and actually come out the other end better. You know, like this is a great time to allow your body to fully recover, to allow yourself to fully super compensate and adapt, um, work on your jumping, which we have in our physical preparation pillar, work on your key athletic abilities that you need to work on, but understand that you can still get the benefits of playing simply from watching film and mentally rehearsing. It's not going to be quite the same, but it has other unique advantages. When playing a game, it can be hard to see you know, the, yourself objectively. So if you have footage of yourself, definitely watch that. Notice what you might have missed. And you might want to watch the same film um, you know, multiple times. You might want to watch the same clip 10 times because you're going to be noticing different things at different times. You know, Watching other players, picking up on their tendencies. That's why basketball is such a beautiful game because there's always like, hundreds of things going on at once and you can pick up so many different things and learn from them. Um, and you would probably get a lot more benefit from watching one game a hundred times than watching a hundred games one time because there's so many things to pick up and notice. And so really take your time to, to work on the film, um, break things down and pick up trends and patterns that are relevant to you and your game. And if you want some help on that, uh, definitely reach out to the Sonics coaches for that. But with that said, um, that's sort of where I'm really excited to share this as a lockdown program because this will give a lot of players the fix of playing um, and give them a skill set that will be able to go with them anywhere they are in the world. Like whether they're traveling on a plane and they don't have access to a court, you can still continue to get better and develop as a player. And this is what Kobe Bryant credited as being his biggest success as a player was his ability to study film. So for, for me, I know like if I'm traveling around and I might feel guilty for not playing, but I can realize that, hey, look, I can get out my phone and watch some film while I'm sitting on the bus or on a plane or whatever and, and still know that I'm getting better. So you can practice every single day and that's why we've got this this perfect training week is designed to be set up as like the best default training week you'll ever have. So you can do it any day, any time, any place, anywhere. You don't need any equipment for the gym program that we've put. Um, it says upper body gym, but you don't need any equipment for it. No specialized equipment. And, and this is a program that um, we've sort of created for Sonics members. And it's designed to be sort of the best default for training and the best reintroduction to strength training. If you've um, kind of been training and then fallen off recently for lockdown or the best introduction to strength training, if you've never strength trained before. So Really, really amazing program there that can be done anywhere in a hotel room, in quarantine, wherever you are. Um, and then the jump practice routine as well. We've got a, a really concise summary of how to do a, a routine called jump balance, which is from an knees over toes guy. And the whole protocol is just about you know balancing, jumping between sides. And in, in our opinion, that is the most important thing to be able to improve your jumping over the long term um, far more than any plyometric exercises or anything like that because the best plyometrics is actually jumping and the best plyometrics and the most specific form of plyometrics is jumping and so for those of you who aren't in knee pain then following this jump balance routine um, is going to be the key to improving your athleticism because jumping is going to improve your speed uh, it's going to improve everything um, it's the best form of plyometrics you can get for basketball, as I said. So the gym sessions um, are layered in there and you're going to be doing a gym session on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday and Sunday with two days of rest. And as so on the Mondays, it's a heavy day, a high day. Um, and that's the day to do two foot practice on the Thursday, the day to do one foot jump practice. And then on Tuesday, Friday and Sunday, you're going to do a lower body gym session. Now, if we go 
into the gym session summary. You can see here, it's a pretty straightforward program, um, links all to it throughout. And it's really just designed to be a great introduction to strength training. I've, I've done a lot on sort of the one by 20, but essentially most athletes do too much volume. One by 20 is the perfect amount of volume for sports specific training for at least the first two years. And then as you get more advanced, you can progress through. Now, we really like the knees over toes system. And if you would like to step up your strength training even further, then highly recommend going through that system. But uh, for most athletes, we find that doing this for the first one or two years, I mean, you could essentially do this forever and continue to adapt because you're just uh, constantly improving the weight on these one by 20s. But um, if you wanted to take it to the next step, then absolutely would recommend the knees over toes program and can't more highly recommend that. And it is laid throughout the whole blueprints where we touch on here sort of the optimal body for optimal performance and a lot about the the knees over toes program um, but really we just wanted to give you a great introduction so you can get started immediately and this whole program there are some things that uh, we give alternatives as to how you can use equipment and how you cannot use equipment but all of these are scalable to with or without equipment um, and if, if you're finding like, hey, look, this is a bit complicated for me, um, can you give me another exercise? Then absolutely, we can do that for you. But all of these can be done, as I said, no equipment in a hotel room. Um, and then there's, it's really basketball specific as well. It's mobility focused as well as strength focused. And there's some great drills in there. So these are the drills that we found to be most effective as coaches and will really help you to develop not only as a as an athlete but also as a basketball player with your dribbling and getting touch with the ball and just really working with scientific principles of skill acquisition to help you get the most benefit from your training um so there's these whole six pillars and just to acknowledge like mindset um the most important thing to do is sort of the physical preparation is the critical one and then the sporting skill component so if you only did two of them you would do these two but if you were serious about your athleticism then we recommend really trying to do all of these things um, the meditation component is massive and we've got one of our favorite meditation guides um, which is from the deep game basketball and we also highly recommend deep game basketball but this is an amazing meditation guide it's got um, the guided meditation in there and strongly recommend you go through that um, each of these days and just make meditation a real practice. And then on Sunday, this is one thing that uh, we're really excited about. Sunday is your day to sort of uh, check in with your goals, review all of the, the processes. And you could swap this on the Saturday as well if you wanted to do it on your rest day. But um, this is where you review all of your weekly goals in the Elite Athlete Blueprint workbook. Um, let me just get that up. So yeah, we go through the your personal lead athlete blueprint. So this is where you can review your goals that you've got written in here uh, in your about you section. So checking out what you want, expectations, all that kind of stuff. Um, so a good opportunity to review the notes that you've written down as well on the pillars and seeing you know what you've been doing and it's a great way to check in keep yourself accountable and as you go through you know we'll, we'll have some templates for planning your training year and everything like that so you can check in with all of that stuff um and we'll have a specific guide on how to do this as well and then the other thing that we recommend is the six phase meditation so we highly recommend you go through that on a sunday go through this guided meditation it just really helps you to sort of look three years into the future and Really be grateful for what it is that you've you've accomplished and been doing now, but also look ahead into what is was coming and to see how you can effectively continue to progress and really like subconsciously tell yourself that you're going to be able to achieve the things you want to achieve. And so this program is about massive action. You know, like you're gonna be doing 20 hours of training a week. And for a lot of athletes, that's probably, you know, three, four times what they've been doing. Um, but you know, action is the only thing to cure anxiety and help continue to progress. And so we, we wanted to make it super, super actionable. The other thing I want to acknowledge is these rest days here. We've got a nice yin yoga routine, highly recommend yin yoga to help you relax and recover. Um, on the recovery pillar, 
we recommend magnesium salts just be, or any form of magnesium. If you don't have a bath, that's okay. You can just use some kind of uh, magnesium supplement or um, magnesium. If you're younger, don't worry too much about that, but it's more for athletes who are a bit older and a bit higher level. Um, magnesium is, is a great opportunity. And just this recovery pillar, like we've got some information on, on walking and why walking is so important and will help you to continue to learn. Um, and really, you know, how much you do these things and what you're doing will depend on your level, your age and what you're able to do. I want to acknowledge for the skill component, um, we've got in our introduction here, our library of individual offensive skills, and we're going to have more and more skills that we're coming up with. But for now, we're just going to host all of the skills that we've got and all of the links to the skills in this section of the blueprint. And it just has a bit of an explanation about uh, the different skills, the different people where you can find great skill drills, and then how to use it, as well as the different playlists that we've got. Now, this is something that we're going to be constantly adding to, so keep checking back. And really, the idea with the skill is that you want to keep, you want to pick skills that you need to work on. So say you don't have a good left hand, or you want to work on your jump shooting, or you want to work on your dribbling, then pick that skill, do it for 20 minutes, and then move on. You know, you can't really go wrong with the skills that you're picking. It's always better to go less is more and really just make it happen in terms of trying to determine what's most effective for you, measure your progress over time. We have guides to that and just continue to make it work. And if in doubt, do something. Something is always going to be tons better than nothing and you'll work it out over time. Uh, we don't want... To, the, the whole process of the blueprint is to create athletes who are their own best head coach and the best thing to do is work with a coach for advice and feedback and as a mentor, but you don't want the coach to be giving you absolutely everything um, because you'll lose your own identity as a player and you won't be able to develop as effectively as possible. That's why we want to use this blueprint to help you uh, determine your own best routine and that's why we've kind of linked to this here so you can check all that out. Uh, what else do I want to touch on? The jump practice routine. So. On the one foot and two foot days these days, essentially these days you're simulating a game. It's got a note here, but the jump practice routine has the idea here. And what you're going to do is a two foot jumping day here and a one foot jumping day here. On the two foot jumping day, you're aiming to jump a right foot, left foot plant and a left foot, right foot plant. And you're going to accumulate between 25 to 100 reps of doing that. Um, and what that's going to do is really help you to build up this sort of plyometric stimulus, elastic tendons, and just become as athletic as possible, really. Um, and then the, the gym session that you're going to do after that, you always want to do the gym session after your jumping, um, is going to be like an upper body and mobility focus just to help really continue to build the strength. Um, and so the jumping routines really... Two foot and two foot only this day and one foot only this day. Do that before you do a game specific skill type session. So you want to sort of simulate a game on these days. So you go out, do your jumps, and then just do a bit of a game simulation. You know, make sort of five layups from each corner, do some dribble move, do some combo moves, apply the skills that you're working on here and in your warm ups into the game specific scenario so you want to practice as if you're playing against the defender even better if you can get one-on-one -on -one with guys and, and practice your one-on-one -on -one stuff but you're just applying the skills that you're working on into a game specific scenario you imagine you're on the court you know the kinds of shots you need to take um, we don't want to be here as coaches telling you what shots you need to take come up with your own workouts and that's what you know all of the best players will do and if you watch you know any documentaries like the the Derek Rose one comes to mind for me the the poo documentary and that's where he's out there just balling out every single day as a youth, um, which again, we don't necessarily recommend here, but he was out there just playing and that was what got him better. You didn't really come up with drills or anything like that. There can be too much structure in, in people's trainings and that can really hamper your development. So you want to have a good balance of doing your drills on these days here, um, understanding you know, what you need to work on by watching film and then going out and just practicing as if you're playing and enjoy it, you know, learn to enjoy it. Um, and so really this is the idea of the perfect sort of training week. Now, in terms of ages where you want to be doing this, like I feel like 
anyone from the age of about 13 to 14 will really benefit from this program exactly as it's outlined. If you're under 13 and you're really keen on it and you want to give it a go, absolutely give it a crack. Um, you're not going to be experiencing any of the issues of, of doing weights, quote unquote, with following this gym program because it doesn't actually have any weights involved. It's all uh, body weight based. And so if you can understand it, then you can go through it. Uh, it's all body weight based and all stuff that you'd be doing sort of on the playground, swinging around for the upper body stuff, at least swinging around on the play equipment. Um, and it's not going to stunt your growth or anything like that. It's just going to benefit your tissue tolerance and general strength and athleticism and will set you up really well to then do further training. Now, again, if you're under 13, it's it's not absolutely imperative to do this stuff. Like, obviously, it's going to benefit you, but if, if you really don't want to do gym sessions and you just want to improve your basketball, then absolutely, the more sporting specific you can be and the more close to actually getting out there, playing and practicing uh, things that you need to work on you can be, the better off you're going to be. So I want to caveat all of this by saying if you're not enjoying your training and you're not enjoying things, then go back to what you love. Go back to what you really enjoy. This is simply a guide as to how you can really take your sport to the next level. Um, and I know that players that are really motivated are going to absolutely love this and enjoy it. Um, but if you're not enjoying it, and you, I mean, you're not going to enjoy every single second of it as well. But if you're not enjoying the and you're not motivated to get up and, and progress and, and go out, then go back to what you love about the game. You know, when we look at the long-term athletic development, I'll just quickly touch on that lecture here. But if you look at long-term athletic development, you know, we sort of see how it's split off on ages. And, you know, really this is where you want to get good at training. So from 11 to 15, that's where you get good at training. And so really this program is designed for someone from the age of like 11 up until 20 and 20 plus, depending on your experience. But the competing side of things, like as you're a bit older and you've been playing for a bit longer, that's where this sort of element comes into things, being able to you know, come up with your own game simulations. But if you're a bit younger and you're not sure what to do there, then just go out and, and do what feels right. Go out and shoot. Go out and practice as if you're, I don't know who you're watching, Kyrie Irving or Kobe Bryant and do some cool moves. Like really just learn to enjoy the game. Um, even better if you can get out with, with friends pending lockdown restrictions and everything like that um, and just get out and play. And this is a really useful guide uh, depending on the age that you're in. And that's why we've sort of linked it down here, the LTAD diagram, long-term athletic development. But it just sort of takes the pressure off depending on the age that you're at to be able to train really well and understand, okay, I'm in this for the long term. Um, I'm going to allow myself to optimally develop and yeah, we've got tons of information in here about the different stages. And if you want to go further, there's there's video links in the blueprint. Now, here's um, a list to our guide of watching film. There's a link to the training program, which is linked throughout it. And here's the importance of sort of walking for recovery. Walking is one of the best recovery methods as it stimulates the aerobic system. And the aerobic system is what causes all sort of waste products and things like that to move around. Um, but the reason we like walking is because it gives you the opportunity to listen to podcasts and audio books and information is, and education is the most empowering thing for, for anyone in any endeavor, particularly for athletes. Uh, if you look at a guy like Kobe Bryant or Michael Jordan, they were both very well read and intelligent and the best athletes are always going to be the most intelligent. And that's why we really encourage listening to audio books and, uh, what do we put it? Read for one hour. So, you know, find books and, and things that you enjoy and, start to learn and enjoy the process of learning. Um, that was one of the things that we talk about in the blueprint is the mindset side of things is really exploring curiosity. That was one of Kobe Bryant's most important traits of all. And I'm, I mean, I'm a massive Kobe fan. If you listen to his interviews, particularly this one here with Jay Shetty, um, he talked about exploring curiosity as the most important thing we can do. And as an athlete, the curiosity side of things will carry you forward. And so this whole training program is a really, really great guide to start with. This is the thing we probably recommend most athletes to start with when they're in the elite athlete blueprint. And just keep in mind, like really, really enjoy what you're doing. Be as sport specific as possible first. Um, enjoy the process and make the most of it.